Uh, yeah, we'll be uh, overhead in like 30 seconds. Uh, yes, on the westbound 60. Copy. <laughs> Colleen, it sure is. It's a white scion, and you're seeing the speeds along with me. That's uh, about uh, 90 to 100 miles an hour is where we've been clocking him. But uh, we heard he was going as fast as 115 miles an hour. And believe it or not, even though we're already in Monterey Park, this started in Riverside. Uh, and it is uh, Grand Theft Auto. So uh, police believe that this is a stolen car. It was originally Riverside Police in uh, their area. They were following it on surface streets. It jumped on the freeway, and that's when CHP took over. So uh, we are now westbound on the 60 freeway near the 710, the California Highway Patrol in pursuit. Yeah, so I was just listening to the police scanner, and they were asking that same question. At this point, they believe it's just one. But looking at the car, you can see that it's got limo tint basically all the way around, so it's really hard to tell. And because this is stolen, they can't just run the plates and figure out uh, who it belongs to because obviously that's going to come back to the rightful owner, and this person stole this vehicle. It's unclear if this was taken in some sort of carjacking or if the vehicle was just left running and the person jumped in or when this was taken. But it was Riverside police officers who spotted the vehicle. They ran the plates. They realized it was stolen tried to pull it over and the pursuit was on and look at these speeds wow over a hundred miles an hour here on the westbound 60. It always surprises me, Colleen, because I figure if I was in a pursuit, I'd get stuck in traffic. But somehow these guys always get on a wide open freeway to do things like this, where they can cross across all lanes and continue evading the police. Right now, this guy is at the East LA interchange, which is actually the busiest interchange in the world. It's actually in Boyle Heights and not East Los Angeles, but it's where the 101, the 60, and the 5, as well as the 10, all come together. So that's why you're seeing all of uh, these freeways here, and he's just on the other side of it. But I can still see the police lights, so I'm going to follow them because uh, he's just on the other side, so he's just out of my line of sight. But as soon as he completes the transition, we'll be, we will be able to see him again. Again, he is in Boyle Heights at the East LA Interchange. Currently, it looks like he's setting up to go westbound on the 10, which is going to put him just south of downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, he slowed down uh, quite a bit as he was making that transition. He may just not know the area. Considering that he came all the way from Riverside, it could be a situation where he just got uh, everything kind of convoluted there at the interchange and was trying to figure out what way to go. And so it looks like uh, the 10 West is the winner here as uh, he continues westbound. And he's going to encounter just a little bit more traffic here. Again, uh, if you can imagine a map of it, uh, the, t the 10 runs just south of all of those big buildings in downtown Los Angeles. And that's what we're traversing through here. His next freeway coming up is going to be the 110 freeway. That's going to put him near the Crypto Arena. 
as well as the convention center and it'll give him an option to continue either north or south or he can continue west on the 10 or he can exit before then and that will put him into the heart of downtown. Yeah, and this is as dangerous as it gets, really, the way he's been driving. But it uh, it could be a situation where they were in tracking mode before, possibly, because Ontario Police was following them with their helicopter until the CHP was able to take over the pursuit. Uh, so during that time, I believe they were in tracking till CHP got behind them. Now that CHP is here, it looks like they want to stick with it. Uh, and uh, in a way, you can kind of understand why. I mean, this guy was traveling at such high speeds. If you don't have those black and whites behind him, other people are going to be completely unsuspecting and not realize that this guy is coming their way at 100 miles an hour. But at least if you're seeing those uh, lights, it may just draw your attention enough to where you move over to the right like that driver just did and let this guy go through. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be San Pedro, and uh, he's still westbound on the 10, so he still has a chance to get on that 110, uh, either north or south, because it is coming up here soon. But you can see that he's starting to experience a little bit more traffic. I want to widen out and just kind of give you a feel for how it looks. So it does look like uh, he is encountering some more traffic than he had before, uh, continuing here westbound on the 10 freeway. Yeah, it sure doesn't seem like it from what we've heard on the scanner. And then just doing a quick visual inspection of the car, it looks intact. Uh, and uh, again, we don't know how long he's had this stolen car, if he st stole it a week ago, for example, and has been driving it ever since, or if he just took it and cops happened to spot him. Uh, so it's unclear how long he's been driving it, but as far as we can tell, it still looks good. Nothing like a pit maneuver or spike strips have uh, even come into play at this point because he's been going so fast and there's really no rhyme or reason to what he's doing. This started all the way down in Riverside. And as we know, pursuits tend to return to an area where they began. At this point, he is nowhere close to home. Absolutely, and who knows how much gas he sh had to begin with. Uh, if he just stole the car, then it was whatever the rightful owner had. But of course, if he's had it for a week or so, then uh, who knows how much he had to put in it. Uh, but for now, uh, as you said, a pursuit that started all the way in Riverside, and it, and it was on surface streets in Riverside for a little bit before it jumped on the freeway. But we first heard about it when it was already on the westbound 60 with Ontario police overhead. And when they got to about the 60 and the 605 or so, that is where they handed it off to the California Highway Patrol. Absolutely, and that's what you should do, is try to pull over when you can safely do so, move over to the right, let the pursuit go through, and don't get involved. Uh, what we sometimes see is that drivers try to be heroes, and they think that they're helping the police by trying to box this guy in, but you never want to do that because you don't know if this person could possibly be armed, and then uh, officers could potentially get hurt protecting you. So uh, you never want to do that, just pull over when you can safely do so. But it looks like we are now on the transition here to the uh, 110. So let's see if he continues through westbound, and sure enough, uh, he had his chance there to get on the 110 either north or south, but is instead uh, continuing westbound on the 10 freeway. So this will put him uh, just north of, of USC, and uh, as he continues west, it'll bring him into areas like Mid-City and eventually Culver City, West LA, and eventually the 10 freeway dead ends in Santa Monica. Yeah, let me widen it out, because uh, I really haven't had a chance to uh, look at the big picture here, but I'm actually only seeing two. 
Uh, incredibly, I'm just seeing uh, two units of the CHP behind the car, and you do have a CHP helicopter overhead. Uh, so they launched out of Fullerton Airport, and they took over for the Ontario Police helicopter at around uh, the 60 and the 605, and uh, they are the units that are now overhead. Do a pit maneuver, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, as, as you well know, uh, pit maneuvers have to be ideally at about 35 miles an hour uh, because anything faster than that could endanger the life of the people in the car as well as the police officers or any other cars that may get hit. Anything slower than that, then the vehicle may not become disabled uh, with the engine cutoff uh, element uh, when it does have that pit maneuver, that spinning effect. So uh, it, ideally, you want 35 miles an hour or so, uh, give or take a few. This, of course, <laughs> you're looking at these speeds. Gosh, these are 80 miles plus, uh, so they simply can't do it. It's too dangerous. Uh, the good thing is, though, that the car is relatively small. So if this vehicle were to slow down enough, uh, if there were to be a nice open roadway up ahead of them, then all of the CHP is pit trained. So any of the pol uh, police officers that are trailing this guy could easily do a pit maneuver and that would likely disable the vehicle considering that it is a newer car and would be uh, equipped with that engine cut off that uh, is what would essentially uh, kill the engine in this case until you can reset a breaker and get things going again. So uh, for now, at this point, the pit maneuver out of the question. Uh, spike strips also uh, not going to be doable just because he's going way too fast. And at this point, there's really no pattern to his driving. Only in Riverside. So when uh, this pursuit first kicked off, we heard that it started on surface streets in Riverside. He was on uh, those streets for a little while before jumping on the freeway. It's unclear if he got on the 91 or what his freeway of choice was at that point because when we first heard about it, he was already at the uh, 60 freeway near the 71. And uh, that is when Ontario police was overhead and asking for the California Highway Patrol to take over. And they took over at around the 60 and the 605 and have been overhead ever since, and as well as behind the vehicle. And of course, the CHP is the police of our freeway systems here in California. So they're gonna be best equipped to handle the chase on the freeway. Yeah, that's correct. So the next freeway coming up is the 405. So that's going to put him near West Los Angeles and UCLA. And uh, at that point, he has the option of going either north or south. And uh, the north will send him up into the San Fernando Valley. South would send him towards LAX. And uh, if he continues west, though, the, the westbound 10 eventually dead ends in Santa Monica. Uh, and that it will dead end into uh, Ocean Boulevard and PCH, PCH and streets like that. So we'll see how far uh, this guy will take it. But if he has any intention of getting back anywhere close to Riverside, then he's definitely going to want to pick up that 405 South to start it, to make his way south. Uh, but again, uh, started in Riverside, continuing here now in Mid-City, high speeds the entire time. Uh, the fastest we noted was about 115, but really haven't seen anything slower than what you're seeing now. Yeah, that's a very good point. It, it looks like he's, for the most part, sticking to that far left lane, but I, I just I spoke too soon. Now it looks like he's uh, moving over to the right, so perhaps he is intending to exit here soon. If so, that's going to be the National Boulevard exit, which is just before you get to the 405, but now he's just kind of all over the place. So this guy very well could be lost, considering that this started in the IE, who knows how familiar he is with the Los Angeles area, uh, but he's definitely gonna be coming up to some traffic here as he approaches uh, West LA.
Absolutely. A pursuit on the freeway is always going to be a little bit safer than a pursuit on surface streets, just because there's so many more elements when you're talking about surface streets, like red lights and stop signs and pedestrians and cross traffic. At least when he's on the freeway, everyone's going the same direction and about the same speeds. And so uh, fortunately, at least during the time that we've been overhead, he has been on the freeway. But of course, this started on surface streets in Riverside. Who knows what may have he may have caused on those streets before jumping on the freeway and continuing a, a very high-speed chase here that is now making its way westbound here, approaching the 405 freeway in the Palms area. Yeah, what I did hear uh, on the scanner in terms of how many people were in the car uh, was that they think it's just one. Uh, so they think it's just the driver, they think it's a man, uh, but it, whether or not he is armed, that is unclear. Uh, I'd really love to know if this car was stolen in some sort of carjacking or if it was uh, you know, simply left running, for example, and the person jumped in. So uh, what we know is that this is a Grand Theft Auto out of Riverside Police. They spotted the car and uh, they tried to pull it over, but of course the driver failed to yield and the pursuit was on. Again, a GTA out of Riverside Police, it then moved over to Ontario Police, at least with their helicopter, before moving to the California Highway Patrol. Exactly. When they run the plates, they're getting the information for the rightful owner. That is, if the plates even match the vehicle, because sometimes it's what's called the cold-plated vehicle situation, where basically the plates are stolen and the car is stolen, so nothing matches. So there's really no way for them to truly know who's behind the wheel of this uh, white Scion. Uh, but I'm just getting a little bit more information uh, from what I understand. When this started in Riverside, uh, by Riverside Police, it was on surface streets, uh, streets like Van Buren and Arlington, and it was uh, roughly around the Riverside Airport area before it jumped on the freeway. And Riverside Police actually backed off of the pursuit at around the 60 and Archibald. Uh, that is where uh, Ontario Police continued to chase it with their helicopter only uh, before handing it over to the California Highway Patrol, who continues to chase this guy now here westbound on the 10 freeway near the 405. Thank you. It's a white scion, correct. They actually just passed over <laughs> at the speeds that he's going. Uh, he, he's moving quick. So he actually just passed, yeah, he just passed the 405. And he's already in Santa Monica. So he's almost at the point where the uh, 10 West is going to come to an end. And then he's, and he's basically approaching that now. So he's near the uh, Santa Monica uh, promenade area, 3rd Street promenade. Uh, you've got the pier. So all of that. this is uh, going to could be coming in the frame here shortly as the 10 freeway westbound is going to come to an end. So let's see if he decides to get on one of the major streets in the area like Ocean Boulevard or PCH or, or Lincoln or just simply U-turns and heads eastbound on the 10 freeway. But he's just under the tunnel there. You see there are all of the people below and we'll see him pop out the other side here in just a moment. Yeah, it sure looks like they're getting a little bit tighter, and I think the concern is that essentially this is going to become surface streets now because this is now going to be a uh, Pacific Coast Highway here. So all of those things that we were worried about before are going to start to come into play. The stop signs, the red lights, the pedestrians, the cross traffic, that is uh, what's going to be uh, in store here for this driver as we continue now northbound here on uh, Pacific Coast Highway in Santa Monica.
Yeah, he's on PCH. That was the California incline. Of course, anyone who lives in this area will be very familiar with that. So he actually ran the red. But the good thing is he kind of tried to clear the intersection before uh, moving through that red light and is now on a nice wide open stretch of uh, Pacific Coast Highway. Now, if the street could open up a little bit, because obviously we've still got a lot of traffic coming the other way, this would be a great place to try a pit maneuver. Uh, and there are, uh, I, what my pilot Jim is, is seeing up ahead because the pursuit's on his side, he says that he does see that there are some police vehicles up ahead. So it could be a situation where they're uh, laying down some spike strips because they know that he's gonna be continuing northbound here on PCH. And we won't give you the exact cross until he passes it, just so that uh, that information doesn't get relayed to him in any way. But here he is now continuing through the red light at, I believe that was in Trotta Drive on PCH. Yes, uh, so Chautauqua I think comes up first and uh, Sunset will come up as well. And uh, let me widen out real quick. I wanna count the cars. I think Jim told me there were a few more now. So he had initially seen four, I'm seeing about three now and the police helicopter overhead. Yeah, let me push in uh, so that our speedometer will be uh, exact here. So looking at about 60 miles an hour or so on PCH, which is clearly much faster than the posted speed. And it looks like he is picking up a little bit of speed here uh, as he approaches Chautauqua, weaving in and out of traffic, using every lane to get by the CHP, though not giving him much in the way of room. Look at how close this officer is uh, behind the vehicle. Yeah, we're good. We're in a Wilson. So we're continuing on Pacific Coast Highway, northbound or westbound, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, Seaview Lane looks like the cross, so we're still in uh, the Pacific Palisades area. It's a little bit dark to see, but that's going to be the ocean there on the bottom of the screen. And of course, Pacific Coast Highway runs uh, along the coast here. And uh, essentially what happened to this guy is the 10 freeway booth came to an end, and it dropped him right onto PCH, and uh, he's continuing northbound. So he is literally nowhere close to where this all began. It all started in Riverside. We're hearing it started near uh, Van Buren uh, down there by the airport. And now he's uh, he's getting desperate. He's uh, now using even the emergency lane, the right shoulder there to get by because there is a little bit more traffic here as he continues northbound or westbound on uh, PCH coming up to Mal Malibu Village Lane. Yeah, absolutely. If he goes to the left, that's the ocean, and so he has to go right if he's going to make any turn off of PCH. But those are all the canyon routes. Uh, they're extremely windy, very dark, and uh, for someone who appears to be unfamiliar with the area, that is not the way he wants to go. Uh, so if he's going to do anything, he should uh, really just U-turn and start going south or east on PCH to get back to the nearest freeway, which would be the 10. Uh, but he could also work surface streets and, and work his way over to the 405. But uh, for now, he looks to be determined uh, to continue here northbound on PCH, coming up to Coastline Drive. Again, uh, still in the Pacific Palisades area. Want to widen out. I, I just lost sight of the nearest uh, CHP unit. It looks like they may be going into tracking mode because those units that were behind him are now uh, no longer in close proximity. But I still see the police helicopter overhead with its night sun shining on uh, this possible stolen white scion.
Yeah, it's unclear uh, really how much fuel he had when he took off. So uh, it's been a very long trek, and he's been going at very high speeds, really working that uh, vehicle. So that's going to burn more gas as well. So this is actually the slowest that we've seen him go. And it very well may be because he, when he looks in the rearview mirror, he's not seeing any officers from the California Highway Patrol. They're in tracking mode right now. He still sees that night sun, though. I'm confident of that because you can see it shining there on the vehicle. But at least he's not seeing those CHP units behind him. So he thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you. Uh, so he's not seeing any units behind him, but I actually just got some info there uh, from uh, my pilot, James Pollard, from the police helicopter uh, that is overhead, and they're telling him that they're actually going to cancel this pursuit. Uh, so that is actually why we are no longer seeing the ground units behind him, and as you may notice, the night sun that we saw shining on the vehicle is shining no more because the air unit is also backing off of this pursuit. And uh, you may wonder why they do that. And in this case, it is because it is a, a property crime. It is a stolen vehicle. They don't know that any other crime was committed. And it, it's not a violent crime. It's just the taking of property. So for that reason, they figure we can get this guy at another time. It's not worth us continuing to chase this guy and potentially endanger the lives of the person in the vehicle or our fellow our officers or even other civilians who are on the roadway. So at this point, uh, they are uh, saying that they are going to let this one go. Copy that, Tim. Okay, copy. I got Telemundo, yeah. Sí, ahora sí los escucho. Y donde estamos es Malibu. Uh, y este es el vehículo que está involucrado en esta persecución. Es un vehículo Scion blanco en color. Y es una persecución que empezó en el área de Riverside aproximadamente hace una hora, quizás, cuando la policía de Riverside vio este vehículo y al ver las placas uh, pudieron ver, basado en la información que tenían, que este vehículo era un vehículo robado. Entonces, al momento que descubrieron eso, trataron de parar al conductor, pero el conductor continuó en las calles de Riverside, cerca del aeropuerto de Riverside, antes de montarse a la autopista 60 en dirección oeste, donde continuó la persecución a, en la autopista 60 a velocidades muy altas, aproximadamente a 100 millas por hora, hasta que el helicóptero de la policía de Ontario empezó a seguir el vehículo solamente desde el aire. Y al llegar a la autopista 60, cerca de la autopista 605, es donde la patrulla de caminos de California empezó a seguir el vehículo en la autopista 60, hasta que la persecución continuó hasta el centro de Los Ángeles, donde el conductor se montó a la autopista 10 en dirección oeste y continuó manejando hasta llegar al área de Santa Mónica donde la autopista simplemente se acaba y de ahí se montó eh, a, a la calle Pacific Coast Highway en dirección norte, donde nos encontramos ahora. Pero solo hace unos minutos eh, la patrulla de caminos de California nos dijo eh, por nuestros radios del helicóptero que al momento van a dejar que eh, el vehículo continúe y van a tratar de arrestar a esta persona en un futuro, uh, porque como el vehículo es solo propiedad y nadie fue herido uh, cuando este crimen ocurrió, uh, van a dejar que el vehículo uh, continúe y van a tratar de arrestar a esta persona en el futuro. 
como les digo, todo esto está pasando aquí en Malibu. Al momento no lo pueden hacer porque el, el Departamento de Patrullas de California decidió uh, remo uh, remover a todas las patrullas que estaban detrás del vehículo. Déjenme les muestro porque ya no vemos a ningún oficial detrás del carro. Entonces, por eso no lo pueden hacer ahora. Pero cuando estaban detrás del vehículo hace unos cinco minutos, uh, no, no lo podían hacer porque las velocidades eran muy altas. Uh, normalmente cuando hacen esa maniobra, el, la maniobra PIT, el vehículo tiene que estar manejando a 35 millas por hora o menos, porque una velocidad más alta que 35 millas por hora sería muy peligroso y, a, y menos de 35 no sería efectiva. Entonces, por eso es que no lo, uh, no lo podían hacer antes. Y también no sabían si la persona posiblemente estaba armada. Uh, si es que la persona estuviera armada, entonces tampoco lo quieren hacer porque no quieren uh, poner las vidas uh, de los oficiales en peligro al tratar esa maniobra. Entonces, por eso es que no lo hicieron, pero como pueden ver, aunque la policía ya no está siguiendo el vehículo, las velocidades ahora están mucho mejor que lo que estábamos viendo antes cuando el vehículo estaba en la autopista y estaba manejando más de 100 millas por hora. Back with NBC. Go ahead. Yep, back with you guys. Yeah, and it's actually a great thing when you really think of it because he was going so incredibly fast before. So to see him now at regular surface street speeds, uh, it's really the reason why the CHP just had to do it. It was so incredibly dangerous. He was running red lights. He was on a major uh, thoroughfare here through the area, Pacific Coast Highway. It really doesn't get any bigger than that. And so they weighed their options and figured that because this was simply just a property crime, it was this, uh, the taking of a vehicle. It wasn't taken uh, in a violent manner. It wasn't an armed carjack or anything like that of that nature. That is why they decided that out of uh, an abundance of caution and for the safety of the general public, as well as the officers involved, it was simply better to just cancel the pursuit and they plan on getting this vehicle at some other time. Uh, this is uh, Sierra Road, MPCH. Uh, we're getting very close, uh, Colleen, but uh, let me just interrupt you for a moment. Uh, my pilot, Jim, is actually telling me that uh, there's a local uh, agency, which in this case I'm guessing would be the LA County Sheriff's Department because we are in their territory uh, yet again. So they were actually just asking us for, for the cross street uh, on the vehicle, uh, which uh, is uh, now going to be PCH and Cross Creek Road. Uh, so there's a possibility that we may see uh, some sheriff's deputies potentially uh, re-engage in this pursuit as it continues northbound here uh, in Malibu. Okay, copy. Thank you. Yeah, he's completely stopped here like he is just a regular motorist, which is actually the point that the CHP was hoping that they would get across by just stopping to chase this person. If he doesn't see any units behind him, if he doesn't see the nights and overhead, he will go back to driving normally and no longer be a threat to the public. So that's exactly what he's doing. He's going with the regular flow of traffic now, if not even slower. Uh, so you see him here, uh, PCH at Webway. And then what my pilot Jim is telling me is that uh, the agency that is on its way is coming here via uh, aircraft. Uh, it's unclear to me if it's a plane or a helicopter, uh, but they are putting on their night vision goggles to be able to chase or at least uh, continue to follow this guy from the air using uh, their night vision capabilities. Hey. 
Thank you. And uh, thank you to everyone, of course, who is continuing to follow us here on this pursuit that we are streaming live here on NBCLA.com and all of our streaming platforms. Uh, we just finished the NBC4 News at 7 o'clock uh, where uh, we first brought you this pursuit out of Riverside. It is a white uh, um, scion, and it is a pursuit that started near the Riverside Airport, roughly uh, near Van Buren and Archibald, I want to say and uh, made its way onto uh, the freeway. We only heard about it on the 60, uh, so um, it's unclear to me if that is uh, where it first uh, jumped on the freeway, but it was 60 westbound. And when it got to about Archibald, that is when, that is when the uh, Riverside Police Department uh, let it go, but the Ontario Police Department then started chasing from overhead. It is a PCH and John Tyler Drive. PCH and John Tyler Drive. So I was just relaying the uh, location there because uh, there is an airship that is coming here uh, that intends to follow this vehicle from the air using their night vision goggles. There's no ground units behind him at anymore, or anymore rather, and it is because uh, the CHP decided to back off because it was it was just too dangerous. He was driving at high speeds on uh, what is essentially a surface street because he's not on the highway, he's on PCH. So you're gonna have street lights, you're gonna have stop signs, pedestrians, uh, cross traffic. So it just became too dangerous and so that's why the CHP backed off. And uh, so basically right now there's no units behind him and there's no airship overhead. But from what we're hearing coming across the uh, our uh, helicopter radios is that there is in fact an aircraft on its way. And I'm not sure on the agency, it could, be, uh, it could, could still be CHP. Uh, we are in sheriff's territory, so I assumed that it could be sheriff's, uh, but I'll work on uh, telling you who that agency is once they get a little bit closer. Swap to settle. Okay. Two eighteen, two one eight. Once again, for those of you who are just joining us, I'm just going to recap everything. This started in Riverside with Riverside Police. They spotted this uh, white scion. They thought it was stolen. They tried to pull him over, but the driver failed to yield, and uh, the pursuit was on. I almost want to say that I see some light coming there from within the vehicle, perhaps a cell phone, from what I can tell. It's kind of hard to tell. It may just be a reflection. But the windows are very darkly tinted, so it's really difficult for me to see. Um, Latigo, Latigo Shore, Latigo Shore, Latigo Shore, uh, Latigo Shore. So once again, uh, this uh, white scion is continuing to make its way northbound or westbound on, P on PCH on Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, coming up to Sea Vista Drive. And uh, so we are hearing that there is an airship, I believe it's LA County, who is on its way here with their night vision goggles. Yeah. Now, uh, Via Escondido. Via Escondido is the next one. And uh, so the airship is on its way here. We, of course, still have sight of the vehicle, so they're uh, coming this way so that they can continue to 
follow it visually. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to turn into a pursuit again, but they just want to keep tabs on where this vehicle ends up so that uh, when it does park somewhere, they'll be able to move some units in and try to detain whoever is behind the wheel. Because at this point, they don't really know who is driving this car. It's a stolen out of uh, Riverside. As far as we know, it wasn't an armed carjacking or anything of that nature, which is why the CHP was able to let it go. It was simply uh, taking somebody's property when you're stealing a, a, a car. Obviously, it's grand theft because it's valued at more than $1,000. But uh, it was a, a, a pretty high-speed chase on the freeway, over 100 miles an hour on the 60 freeway before transitioning to the westbound 10, where eventually the freeway just comes to an end in Santa Monica, and then he was forced on a PCH. So it's unclear what the what his game plan is here. Uh, if he's familiar with the area, if he if he's trying to get to a certain destination but for now is uh, fully commi committed here uh, northbound on uh, Pacific Coast Highway in the Malibu area. Uh, Paradise Cove. And thank you to everyone who continues to watch us here on NBC. LA.com and all of our streaming platforms. I We're coming up to uh, Ramirez Canyon. And as far as we know, it's just one person in the car. Of course, the windows are darkly tinted. It looks like limo tint all around, so hard to tell. but it's a pursuit that started all the way out in Riverside. So that is quite the trek. Unclear how much fuel he started when uh, started with when this pursuit kicked off. So he very well could be running low on gas. Sometimes we do see these drivers pull over and get gas, believe it or not. Uh, and it's usually a situation where they don't have any units behind them, like in this case. So if, even if he did stop at the nearest gas station and fueled up, there's really no units anywhere close, uh, so he would be able to fuel up and uh, still have enough time to take off again before any officers approach. It's on the other side of those buildings. There we go. coming up to Point Doom here in the Malibu area very soon as he continues northbound on PCH coming up to uh, Bush Drive it looks like and yeah it is uh, the sheriff ship that is on its way here thank you for those of you who are reaching out and uh, letting me know I appreciate that So PCH at Morning View Drive in Malibu. It's pretty dark, so I can't show it to you. But on the left side of the screen, you've got the Pacific Ocean. And it looks like he is tapping on the brakes here. Is he coming up to a red? No, he's got a green. He's really not going to have too much in the way of traffic as he continues northbound here, westbound on PCH. So if you're just joining us and you're wondering where the police went, well, <laughs> it was uh, initially Riverside Police. Uh, they relinquished it at around the 60 at Archibald. And then I think no one was behind it for a good stretch. It was just the uh, Ontario Police helicopter. And then 
Uh, this is uh, Guernsey Avenue, G-U-E-R-N-S-E-Y, Guernsey, Guernsey, hard to pronounce. So we're coming up to uh, Trancas Canyon here in Malibu, still on PCH. It is getting really dark, so why don't we throw on the handy dandy infrared? <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier here to see uh, where it's really dark as it continues northbound on PCH. Obviously, it's a lot easier when you've got the police helicopters trailing him because e even if I lose sight of the car, I can follow the police vehicles. But in this case, it's just following a uh, vehicle. and. Uh, Sometimes when it's a dark colored vehicle, it makes it even uh, more difficult to follow. But in this case, it's white, so it's a, it's a little bit easier to spot. Uh, the vehicle itself is a uh, Scion taken, uh, unclear from where, but it was Riverside Police who initially spotted the car, tried to pull it over, but the driver failed to yield and the pursuit was on. Uh, go ahead, Tim. Tim, go ahead. Yeah, I can kind of hear you. It's a little broken, but I hear you. I'm back with you guys. Once again, thank you to everyone who continues to watch our coverage here of uh, what was a uh, California Highway Pursuit. I am getting uh, your messages on my social media, so I thank you for that. Uh, thank you to our followers, uh, Andrew and Robert out of Lakewood. Thank you for your support as we continue to watch this stolen white scion make its way northbound here on PCH through the Malibu area. And uh, you may notice we're seeing the light. Uh, go ahead, Tim. Say that one more time. It's just a little broken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Okay, back with you guys here. I was just taking care of a little housekeeping issue there. Uh, Tim Deccan and OC, who always helps me with my signal. So thank you, Tim. Perfect. Uh, there are, uh, from what we can tell, there are some police vehicles up ahead. I can just kind of see them. They're off the nose of the helicopter. And uh, what we're seeing now, too, is the light from the police helicopter. Uh, that is going to be the sheriff's ship, uh, from what I understand. So you can see uh, where uh, it was pretty dark before, as, you, as I noted, uh, there is now a night sun over this pursuit, or uh, what was a pursuit. I'm waiting to hear them say the official word again, uh, but it sure uh, looks like uh, we're back on here, uh, northbound on Pacific Coast Highway, coming up to Decker Canyon Road. So we've got the sheriff's ship overhead. We've got its night sun. I do see a police car up ahead. I wonder if they're coming here or if they're just sending an unrelated call because it, it almost looks like they're not quite on PCH. Like they may actually be up on in, in the canyon. So we'll, we'll see as we get a little bit closer. But again, PCH now at Nicholas Beach Road in uh, the Malibu area. And this guy's all alone. If uh, there was a unit behind him from the CHP, they could easily try a pit maneuver. The speeds are a touch on the high side, so they would want him to slow down a little bit to about 35 miles an hour before they would attempt one. But uh, considering we didn't see this guy stop for gas anywhere along the way, he's got to be running low. This pursuit started in Riverside. He's been driving like a madman. 
uh, and uh, only slowed down because he didn't see the cops behind him for a good chunk of change. But now you can see that uh, the airship is overhead with its night sign shining bright on this possible stolen white cyan. Okay, there's a police unit there, but it looked like they were there on a traffic stop. So we'll see if perhaps anybody else gets involved. Right now it's helicopter only. Actually makes for a pretty cool shot. You wanna look at that. Pretty neat shot there, the police helicopter overhead with its night sign shining bright on this one lone car. I spoke too soon. One lone car here on uh, PCH making its way northbound uh, in the Malibu area. And if you're just joining us, this is a pursuit that started in Riverside. It was a Grand Theft Auto, so a stolen vehicle. It made its way on surface streets in Riverside for a bit before jumping on the freeway. It was on the westbound 60 at 115 miles an hour when we first heard about it. In fact, I, it came in as a, a tip for me, and I want to thank the person who, uh, who tipped me off to it. That was uh, on Twitter, xmedia92. So xmedia92, thank you very much for your tip. I, I appreciate it uh, because you were the first to tip us off to this pursuit. So whenever any of our viewers, whenever you, any of you at home uh, see a pursuit or any other breaking news, in your area and you want to let us know about it, you can always contact us here at NBC and we'll try to get on it. So I appreciate the tip. Thank you for that. And uh, this pursuit continues here. PCH, uh, Yellow Hill Mountain Way. We're in, uh, we're approaching Point Magoo. Uh, there is an area kind of near Point Magoo that's kind of unflyable for us uh, because it is a restricted airspace. So we kind of have to dodge that. Eventually that's going to get us up into areas like uh, Oxnard and Ventura County if we continue going. And uh, there will be a point where we can't continue anymore. Uh, I've gone on PCH as far north as uh, Montecito or so. Uh, years ago, we covered mudslides there that tragically took the lives of almost two dozen people. So I know that we, uh, we can still get a signal in, uh, even if we're uh, up in Montecito. But anything beyond that, it's, it's pretty much outside of our range. But for now, continuing here, Point Magoo, PCH, and Tonga Street. Uh, what we believe is just uh, one uh, person in this uh, possible stolen white scion continuing to evade the authorities here on PCH. We've got about an hour left to fuel, right, Jim? So PCH and Deer Creek Road, so still Point Magoo area. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Let me uh, sign off. So I was just talking uh, to my pilot, James Pollard, uh, here, and uh, we're at that point where basically we're going to have to pull off. Uh, where he's, he's being told that the police helicopter is going to pull off. Uh, so it would just be us at that point, and obviously it's, it's very dark out here, so we're actually uh, going to pull off of this one for now. If he continues north, he'll eventually end up in the Oxnard, Ventura area, uh, and we, we'll, we of course will continue to monitor the scanners. If we hear that any other agency picks him up at that point, we'll uh, head back on over and uh, try to bring you uh, the culmination to this very lengthy pursuit out of Riverside. But for now, uh, I'm Eliana Moreno, along with James Pollard. Thank you very much for watching and uh, sticking with us. 
Uh, we do have the NBC4 News at 11 o'clock coming up here in about three hours. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you at 11. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. We have a suspect running. Oh, this is gonna be to watch more heart-stopping car chases happening across Southern California, subscribe here. Thanks for watching. The chase is on.